Boker Tov and welcome to the very last day of the 2016 Homeschool Family Conference. Today we're going to talk about how to teach high school and I know some of you have been looking forward to this all week so we're going to do our very best to be concise and to help you make a plan for your, your older children to help launch them out into the life that you can see that Jehovah has been preparing them for all along. Can you believe you're even talking about high school? Can you believe your kids are that old? I know, that's how I feel too. I have three in high school this year and one that's already graduated. My name is Ann Elliott and I'm the creator and founder of homeschoolingtorah.com. I remember being very nervous about teaching kindergarten and Basically, from the time my child was born, my first son was born until the time he started kindergarten, I thought about it all the time. I checked out books, I studied, I talked, I went to conferences, I made plans. Have you ever made like so many plans for kindergarten that you had them like lined up to the minute what you were going to do each day and what worksheets you were going to use and then you started kindergarten and if your kids were anything like mine, they didn't really want to stop playing all day and, and enter kindergarten. And it's so much the same for high school. In fact, I feel sometimes like high school is almost more difficult than learning um, or teaching my child how to read and to write. Because at least on that end of things, um, it was a short time each day. And it felt like, you know, if I, if I mess it up, I, I have more time. But when you get to the high school years, you start to feel like you're up against the wire. And if you mess it up, boy, you could, you could prevent them from ever getting a job <laughs> you know I'm, I'm feel, I don't want to fill your heart with fear today though because first of all I have experienced it now to see that my kids actually do come out the other end and second of all I have experienced to see that the scriptures are true in 2nd Timothy 3 16 and 17 when it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine which is teaching for instruction for correction, um, I'm messing him up, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, and your child is almost a man, your woman is, or your daughter is almost a woman, but it is, in, it is profitable that they may be perfect, which means mature, it means complete, thoroughly furnished for all good works. I also think a lot about Caleb and Joshua, the two spies that went into the land um, at Kadesh Barnea, and they they spied out the land and they had faith. Deuteronomy says that they followed wholeheartedly after Yehovah. I want my children to follow wholeheartedly. But what, right now, at 17, 16, and 14, my, my high school students are still children, according to the scriptures. I know they've passed the age of bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah, and I understand that. I know that they are capable of reproducing in a physical sense. I know that they look like adults, and most of them are, in fact, two of them are taller than I am, and three of my kids are taller than I am. I count my adult one as well. And I know that they look in every way like an adult, but remember at Kadesh Barnea when, when Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report and the rest came back with a bad report, Yehovah did not, did not hold accountable anyone under the age of 20. And I do believe in, in other things, you know, they didn't go off to war until they were the age of 20. I think the Torah teaches that from God's perspective, while they may be close to adulthood and can do many of the things that an adult can do, they are not quite arrived yet. And you can relax because what I think is that in the Torah, if you have until age 20 to be a full adult, that gives you an extra two years from what all of the other high school students have in our country. They're expected to be an adult by age 18. They can vote, they can drive, they can hold jobs, they can go to college, and your, your children are welcome to do all of those things, but if you look at them still as, that is my child and I am responsible for them, and I can come along and I, I can breathe a little easier knowing we've, we've got a little extra cushion. That helped me immensely, and it still does. All right, so I want you to think first of all for uh, about your high school students. What are your goals? Because that matters immensely. Your goals may not be the same as my goals. And my goals are not necessarily the same as all of the goals of the other homeschooling moms that I know. In fact, I'm sure of it. 
we heard the other night from Katie Hearn and she has am amazing goals for her children. And my goals are very similar, but they're slightly different. And the reason for that is because my, my personality, my makeup, my husband's personality and his makeup is very different from Katie and Jeremy Hearn. So we don't do absolutely everything the same and you won't do everything the same as I do. That's really important to realize. I was reading a book by Brad Scott and he was talking about how um, we are made in the image of God. And it is the, I think it's the last book that he wrote on becoming a cod or one. And he talks about the fact that in the garden when Yehovah made Adam and Eve, he told them to become one flesh. So the man shall leave his father and his mother and he shall become one flesh. I always thought that meant the, the wedding ceremony, the marriage, that the night after, they become one flesh. But he points out that you're not one flesh, not really, you're trying, but you're not one flesh. Not, I've been married 20 some years and I'm still not quite the same as my husband. We're not really one flesh. Well, you're one flesh when you have a child. That child has a little bit of you and a little bit of your husband in, in that child. And that now you are one flesh. So the goals that you have for your children reflect the one flesh that has been made from the union between you and your husband. You, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree is a simpler way of saying it. Your kids are a lot like you. So what are your goals? Your goals are going to be very similar to your kids' goals. Your passions and dreams and desires that child was placed divinely into your home and it is your privilege, your honor to direct and guide that child, to train them up in the way that they should go and when they are old, and I think that means past 20 at least, they will not depart from it. So I think the most important thing you can do is if you're married to sit down with your husband in a, in a quiet place away from all your kids and to really pray about those goals together. Pray about the dreams and the, and the concerns. You know, you see the imperfections of your child at 16. Of course, they have more maturing to do. I hope you realize that, that they're not finished yet. Be patient with them, as the old song says. But pray over them. And, and, and maybe then come back and pray with your kids, too. Ask them. I want you to make sure, as you're watching this video, that you don't only watch this video. I have been talking all week long about some very important key foundational principles that I want you to know. First of all, I want you to go back to day one and make sure that you watch the four character qualities that your child needs to succeed in school. And I know that it is aimed for the preschool level, but I really, really, really want you to catch it for your, catch, your high school student. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Secondly, be sure that you watch yesterday's video on chores, kitchen jobs, and life skills because in the last 10 minutes or so we talk a lot about life skills and how to help your child make goals for the future and how to know what those goals should be, how to help them find out what their gifts and talents and spiritual gifts and abilities and all of those things are. So be sure that you at least catch those and hopefully you can catch a lot more. All right. At Homeschooling Torah, we do approach high school in a little bit different way than some of other curriculum company, and especially from the public school. But we have really worked hard to make sure that we cover the same subjects. Now, I want to talk first of all about English and how English is taught in a high school, a typical high school. You'll have four levels of, of high, high school English. You'll have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and they usually just call it, you know, advanced English or English 1, English 2, English 3, English 4. You can look in your local public school um, course catalog on their website and you can get a good idea of what their English courses are. But you'll notice one thing and that is that they, they tend to lump all of the English language subjects, the language art subjects together into one class each year. But they might have an emphasis, maybe the emphasis will be literature or maybe the emphasis, and often not is what it is. Um, maybe it will be writing, but um, they're going to be also reviewing a lot of gra grammar concepts. They'll be discussing spelling and vocabulary, punctuation, all of those things inside this very together subject called English. But if you go over to science, science, they break it up into chemistry, biology, physics, and they don't cross over too much. There's a general flow in which you need to you need to learn a little bit of math before you can do chemistry and physics and such, you know. 
And over in math, you know, again, they're very separated from each other, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, and so on. We um, cover the same subjects in homeschooling Torah, but we don't necessarily do them in the same sequence. For instance, in our English courses, we teach grammar, and then in another year we teach writing, and in another year we teach literature, and, and so on. So what you're covering, you're covering the same subjects, but you're covering them in a different order. So one of the things that I want to emphasize today as you're watching this video is that you don't have to go in the same order as the public school. You can go in a different path and end up at the same target. Only I think our target is a little better because we base it on scripture. I'm just saying because scripture has made its promises that, you know, it, it will thoroughly equip us. All right. One of the things, though, is that colleges are complaining about students that are coming in. Um, freshman level students and they're saying they're not ready. They're not ready for college. It seems in the United States that we have not the best elementary and high schools um, compared to the rest of the world. And part of the reason is, is it feels like we've dumbed down things and we've simplified things, we've spoon fed, you could say, and um, maybe emphasize sports and ac extracurricular activities, um, drama and the arts but not so much on how to think critically and how to read primary sources and how to write very concisely and for a specific audience. But when they get to college, everything flips and our colleges are known to be some of the very best in the world, if not the best. People come from all over the world to go to our colleges and universities, and yet our own students aren't really very prepared to enter those colleges and universities. That's a shame. And what I, I don't care if you send your kids to college. In fact, we aren't planning to send all of our kids to college. We so far have one that, one that has gone to college and one that is thinking about it, but we aren't sure. And it's not necessarily our goal. And again, that doesn't matter. We don't have to compare goals. But what you do need to do is pre be prepared to send your child out into life as an adult in a world where everybody else is an adult. They need to be able to think critically to be able to, to discuss, to be able to not be deceived by the, the tricks of the enemy that will be coming against your child. All right, so here are some things that we do to help your, your child prepare for that. We want your child to learn how to read. There are so many things in this. I, I'm gonna go back to that video that we did on the first day. There is character, and maybe your child is at high school level and is still lacking in that character department. You know, I, I would put everything away and it would work on character. If that's the case at a high school level, probably what you're going to want to do, and if you're going to have to backtrack that far, you're going to have to be really intense about it. You're going to have to clear your calendar and you're going to have to make sure you are with that, that high school student as much as possible. Um, it says a child left to himself will bring his mother to shame and you don't have much time. Be with that child as much as possible. Keep, I, I guess it would be more easier to say keep your child with you because you're the one that has to go through your day. Teach your child to work. Work um, brings out a lot of character flaws in us, but it also trains good character. It trains diligence. It trains self-control. It trains people how to think of what the employer needs instead of just what they selfishly want for themselves. It helps in so many areas, so I can't, I can't help but recommend work. And what I mean is having your child work with you. If you need to get out and do manual labor, fine. If you need to help find someone that can apprentice your child, fine. But it will really help in the character department. Secondly, be in scriptures together. Be, spend as much time together in the Word, discussing it, reading it together, and praying together. Pray to God in front of your child. Pray with your child. Put your hands on and bless your child and have your child pray with you there. Then go out and minister. How can your child um, pour their life into others? Take them to a homeless shelter. Take them to you know, a crisis pregnancy center. Take them to any kind of service industry or, or area that they can donate of their time that you can. And, it, and that will really help in the character department as well. Put your child on somewhat of a boot camp schedule you know you don't have much time we're not talking about a young child here we're talking about a, a child who only has a short time left so um, I would I would boot camp their life I would 
I, and don't send them off to the government to do that. You're capable. You can do it. Are you, if, if you have to be, not be lazy. It'll really disrupt your life, but you have such a short time. It's your child's heart. Don't lose them. You know, boot camp their time. What I mean by that is have a rigid schedule. Fill up their time so that they don't have any spare time in which to get into trouble. And again, keep them with an adult. You are the, his father as much as possible. And, and finally, teach your child to read. And then now I'm going to come back to these other subjects for a second. We've got those skill levels. Um, we have skill. We had to learn how to read. We have content, which hopefully you would have all those middle years to pour content into your child. And you're still going to do it at the high school level, yes. But now you're graduated up to the communication level. You want your child to learn to talk back. But if your child isn't there yet, your child doesn't have the skill and the, the content down, then you need to spend at least a year or two dumping into them as much content and skill as possible. Have them read aloud to you. Stop after a few moments and discuss as often as possible so that you um, can see that they are understanding. Um, and then have them read by themselves. Maybe because again, if, if you're catching up, you want them to um, you want them to maybe sit at the table or on the couch and read only a few paragraphs by themselves and then stop them and then ask them to tell you back what they have learned and, and graduate eventually to having them write down notes about what they have learned and then that's why I've showed you this book. I want you to see this book. It's called How to Read a Book and it is by Mortimer Adler. In this book, we have, um, we're going to be using it a lot in our upcoming literature curriculum, and I want to apply it to history and science at the high school level as much as possible. We already do. You just don't realize that we're doing it. Um, but it will help your child learn to read various types of literature, various types of writing, from nonfiction to fiction to biographies to um, different, various kinds of arguments um, to old literature to the styles of different authors, all of these different things that play into reading and it's hard. Your child, if, if they're catching up, it's, it's going to take a lot of work and you're going to, you know what, you're going to feel a lot of animosity at first and a lot of grumbling and complaining and I want you to just grit your teeth and go on because you're doing it for the heart of your child. Don't listen to the whining and the crying. Don't. Don't because you, you have their best interest at heart. That's why I like to call it a boot camp. But now, all right, let's continue pretending that we've done it right all along and your child is ready for high school. So now you want to make sure that they can read with comprehension, um, even, even things with difficult words in it. Now, if you want your child to really learn some difficult words, go back to, you're going to laugh, go back to our phonics level two, way back down to the little kid stuff, because it's Noah Webster. And Noah Webster wrote the very first English dictionary in the United States. Um, for, it was especially for America, and he was a, a Bible-believing man who based his definitions on a scriptural worldview. And you can go back through the level two words with your child and make sure they know them. Go back to our vocabulary um, curriculum and make sure your child knows all of those Latin and Greek roots and, and prefixes and suffixes. But then, really, the best thing that your child can do is just read, 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 read. I think that those high school years are it's so important for your child to spend time reading. And it needs to start with the Bible. Um, you're, you're, on our website, we have um, independent Bible reading schedules so that you can schedule it for your child. But as you see them approaching graduation, I'm going to pray, and you can pray too, that you'll see your child not needing a schedule anymore to kind of taking it on as something they want to do, as something they do without being asked. And, and waking up in the morning or before they go to bed at night, reading of the scriptures and drinking deeply of that, that fountain that will help them throughout their whole life. Um, continue the copy work. And as we heard from others, you know, you may want to make it a graduation requirement. That they need to copy the entire Torah before they are able to leave your home. But also read ancient sources. And we have these scheduled in our history curriculum especially. I've put some of the very best ones in there. And I hope that you will go to great lengths to get your children to read those. And, and discuss them. You read them too. Um, how about science? In science, there is so much that can be read. Um, I would stick, if your child is still unsure of his or her own beliefs in Scripture and of the, of the truth of the Scriptures, then I would stick with feeding them truth. 
um, as much as possible. But if your child has been firmly grounded in truth and they know what they know that they know that the Bible is true, then you may want to, um, together, listen to an evolutionist argument and um, and debate it together. I wouldn't do it on their own. I wouldn't let them be exposed to the lies of the devil like that. Um, I would get books from Answers in Genesis and the Institute for Creation Research and um, read them together, discuss them, go and visit museums and discuss um, how their arguments are false. Um, then, of course, you want your child to learn to research. And researching is when they have a question and they want to know the answer. And for our kids, it's sometimes come up with, you know, maybe a son wants to build something and he needs to research the, the physics, basically, the mechanics and how to put something together. And, and that's something that can be easily researched. But you also want them to research things, you know, like their health. Um, how to cook a good meal. All of these things will give, lend themselves to developing research skills. But sometimes you want to also assign research skills and we have some suggestions for you in our curriculum. And, and I would gradually lengthen the amount of a paper that you want them to write. You know, maybe start it with one page and then gradually go up to two or three pages and get longer and longer and closer together. Make them do it quickly with a deadline because that's what happens in college. Then sometimes, instead of writing a paper, have them present it in a different way. And if your child struggles with writing and isn't going to go to college, you can skip right to this. Um, have them do some writing because it's, a, it's like a muscle that needs to be exercised. You can keep them short to essays. And those are all scheduled, by the way, in our writing curriculum. But if they are going to go to college or not, make sure that you also give them ability to speak. You could do what I'm doing here and you could set up a camera and have them give a one minute presentation, a five minute presentation, a 10 minute presentation. I'm telling you, 10 minutes is a lot easier than one. <laughs> I have a struggle condensing my, my thoughts down. And that's a great way, then you can pull the camera back and you can talk about it together. This isn't really hard to set up at all. This is just on my smartphone that I'm recording this. You could do a PowerPoint presentation and if you don't have PowerPoint, then go to Google Documents or I think they call it Google Office now, I'm dating myself again, and you can get um, a, a similar presentation software uh, for free and you can use that and have your child make a presentation that presents the information that they have learned in history and science and literature and government and all of these courses, but it helps them learn to communicate it back out. I would do this in a variety of ways. Sometimes have an audience that's live, maybe have an audience ask questions of them. Um, maybe have them present at the table after breakfast what they learned in their Bible reading the day before. I, w I love our, the curriculum that we have that has the kids reading books about Christian living and, and I know that we're following Torah so some of the things that are in those books will be argumentative for you. Um, you, won't, you won't agree with everything and I and kind of intentionally did that at the high school level for my own children. These were courses I developed for my kids. I wanted them to see that not everybody agrees with us and I wanted them to learn to have an argument, to have an answer for anyone who asks us of the hope that is in us. That, and so um, have them read it, but there are scheduled in, um, you know, discuss this with your mom, show this with to your dad, look for books on this, write a short thing on that, and, and it really it will help a lot. So I, I strongly recommend that you use that. Finally, you want your child to learn to take notes and to study those notes in order to take a test. And we don't have a lot of tests in our curriculum. Um, to prepare for the ACT and the SAT, if you're going to want to go off to college, um, to make transcripts and all of those things, I recommend that you see Lee Bins. She is at thehomescholar.com. I'm going to put a link to that below the video. But if you're a member of Homeschooling Torah, don't rush off and buy something. She's given us three amazing gifts that cost money over on her website. So you can go to our website under under uh, teacher helps look down under bonuses and you will see high school helps and those are from her she ha will help you prepare for those tests prepare your transcripts and and just plan out the homeschool the high school years she's talking about things that i can't get done in this video so i i'm kind of depending on you going to those and and going further and learning about how to do a transcript because i'm not going to cover all of that today so I really, I hope that you will take advantage of that. If you don't, if you're not a member, go to her website. She has quite a bit of free information and then she has a lot of Kindles that are very reasonably priced. And I, I just highly recommend them. Okay, um, but I, I was saying getting ready for a test. 
um, you can test your child. You, and, and a good one to do it is science. Test them on their vocabulary or even history. Test them on their dates. Test them on, um, have them write an essay that explains what they've learned. I'm telling you, essays are excellent to let you see inside your child's heart to see what they're learning and what they're understanding and where they need more work. You also need to have your child learn to plan their time wisely. This isn't really part of a school subject, but planning their time is important. They won't always have you around to tell them to get up in the morning, tell them when to go to bed at night, tell them it's time to do their chores. So have them learn to make a schedule, learn to make a budget, learn to make all of these things that demonstrate self-control rather than someone else controlling. That they have, will have initiative and can, and can control their own life um, without needing someone else to be over, over them. Okay, um, I have linked below the video to an article that I've written on how to use homeschooling Torah to teach high school, the subjects that are typically covered in a high school and the subjects that we cover. Um, if your child is coming into homeschooling Torah and they've already attended high school um, for several of their high school years, you may not want to use us for high school or you may only want to supplement with us because they've already started down a track. It might just be simplest and cheapest for you to um, not have to buy two different curriculum companies. So I'm just going to be honest with you about that. Our curriculum is really intended for kids that start in ninth grade so that they have the whole thing the whole four years to cover it and then I know that they will have the same subjects that are taught in any public school in the United States um, except for the bad stuff. <laughs> um, instead, of, instead of Shakespeare we, we, we teach the King James Bible. Did you know that Shakespeare was alive at the, uh, the same time period in which the King James Bible was written? They both used the these and the thous and the poetic um, writing of, of trying to have meter to things but um, you aren't going to get the junk that you would get in, in Shakespeare, basically the pornography that you would get, because the scriptures are going to teach it in a way that is godly. Basically, the bottom line for high school is that you want them to read, 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 and then write so that you can see what they're learning, and then discuss. Keep your children still close to you as much as possible. Yes, they're going off into the world in short times where that they can be an apprentice or learn skills or go off and have their own business and try to learn to drive and get a job at the grocery store. All of these things that high school students typically do, but as much as possible. Keep your kids with you. Keep them close. Keep them discussing. Pay attention to their lives. Become their friend. This is not a toddler that you have to boss around. Now is the time that you give them more freedoms to see how they do and then you give them more freedoms to reward them but you want to be their friend you want to be in their life you want to be talking to them you want to know what their dreams and goals and concerns and depressions and fears are and then turn them to scripture for their answers don't turn them to psychology in the world turn them to, to the Bible so read write discuss um, stay close to them and send them off when they're when God says they're, they're an adult we are confident that the Bible is true we have placed our confidence in it from their earliest of days. So don't lose that confidence just because they turned 15. Don't lose that confidence just because everybody else is doing something different. Hold your confidence in the Word of God. In fact, get into the Word more than you ever did before. And do it with your kids. Let them know your fears and dreams. Um, talk to them about what's on your heart. But don't lose your confidence. When God says that your kids are going to be thoroughly equipped for every good work, He means it. It's a, that's a promise. As, that you can that you can depend on as long as you are willing to put in the work to keep them in, to, in his Torah, in his writings, and in his the, the, the scriptures from cover to cover. Um, I know that you can then depend on him to hold true to his promise. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't let anything come in to scare you. But trust him. Trust him like Caleb did. Be wholehearted that he will come and he will fight for you and he will prepare your kids. And someday you'll look back and go, wow, look what he has done. And that's what my hopes and dreams are for you. All right, there's no way you can learn it all in this one video. Make sure you go to the resources below. If you have questions, send them to us. You can have the contact button at the top of this page, and we would love to help you out in any way we can. Shalom.